We've got Sandlin's deep there, Shorey, and you got Clark in the ruck. So something you touched on just after half time. So maybe too little, too late, but it's a mm. worthwhile doing it, that's for sure. Final term underway, and there's a push. Season's still alive for Fremantle, but they have Collingwood next week. That's the hard part for them. Essentially, they're going to have to win that and then hope other results go their way. Harvey to Wells, marks on 50. They, they just have not worked hard enough as a group for their defensive area. Uh, the, you know, the, running the space like that with Daniel Wells, someone, a wingman or one of the midfielders, has to get back as hard as you can to help out defence. It's been too easy tonight. For a 75-point lead. Strikes it well. That is a delight. Yeah, I absolutely agree, sure. I would suggest a lot of the vision Mark Harvey's going to show during the week. We see here, there's enough time mm -hmm. after the centre bounce for someone to get back in front of Wells. Look at all that space there. And I would suggest a lot of the vision being shown by the Frio Dockers coach, Mark Harvey, particularly the midfield coach, will be on the midfield spread because the Kangaroos midfielders out worked them all night. Well, if you're not going to do it up the other end, as in the forward press, you've got to get numbers back and do it in the back press, or else you're not doing anything. You're just in the middle watching ball watching, not space, uh, you know, not watching for space to run in to help out. You can smell some more blood here, North Melbourne. They're not finished just yet. Greenwood to Rawlings to half forward, bouncing ball. Gallup went to ground, but Campbell mopped it up. Spears it inside 50, and Lindsay Thomas Go back, will he have Lindsay. the shot? There's nothing to lose now. Well, I, I, I'd like to see a teammate go over to him, Ruzi, and just say, OK, take this on, have a go. If it doesn't go, you're not going to convert a lot from there anyway, I would think, 50 out. Well, you're an old basketball shooter. What was the best way for a shooter to get back into form? Keep Shoot. shooting. Yeah. They just used to keep shooting, keep I, shooting. I heard you shooting. were good at that too. Oh, I <laughs> never passed up a decent <laughs> shot from anywhere. Even half Over court. halfway. <laughs> a horrendous miss earlier in the game. Runs onto the left. It's across the face. And it's another behind for Lindsay Thomas, who now has 17 goals, 31 for the year. You, you that wasn't to, a bad kick, though. You that do was... have to keep kicking him. That's yeah. it, what he's there to do, and he's got to work his way out. There's no easy out for him. He's just going to have to go back and keep going, keep going until his confidence picks up. Harper with the fist. Trying to gather his own crumb. Clark. Harper lays a tackle. Well harassed by both Harper and Goldstein. Swallow. Subin. Ball in. If you've joined us late, Subin on. as the sub for Fremantle with Matthew Pavlich. A leg injury. A worrying leg injury. Maybe in the Achilles direction. It's lower leg. Keep you posted. Oh, geez, Harper's slung into the deck by Subin. Andrew now, Swallow got stood yeah, on then. I think you'll okay. find. At that last uh, stoppage, yeah, I'm pretty sure he got stood right in his face. He's going to find it hard to swallow. <laughs> <laughs> Brought, caught, just in time. Subin's kick smothered. Ibbotson rolls it, bounced over Hinckley, straight through Harvey. And now Ballantyne's away. Sandlins is running back towards the goal square. Ballantyne sees him, ignores him, takes another bounce, runs inside 50, wants the goal, bang! Dragged down, splendid chase. An amazing chase in the end from Thompson. And the ball back on the wing. Jeez, teammates had to come at him, though. They, you knew that he was going to be that tired by the time he got to this point. He had to have someone to get him, go into his vision. You knew what he was trying to do. But he just had that much pressure. What was his teammates thinking? He burnt Rawlings off. It was Thompson that had the toe. Rawlings was gone. Bastinac couldn't get it free. Now he does. Harvey puts the Jets on. A shimmy. A bounce. He's enjoying his day's work. Can't quite trap it. Ball in. 76 points. Swallow. It's a blood off. Here we go. Yeah, oh, boot to the face. He's got a fair fat lip too, I'll mm. tell you that, boys. Greenwood backtracks, Thompson. 
puts it up in hope. Edwards will need to jump early. Edwardson went to ground, caught. Adams, a little high. Yeah, if he doesn't get the free kick, should be nearly holding the ball then. I'll tell you what, Swallow's lucky they don't wear the old screwing oh, boots still. Yeah. Oh. The, the, what about the old wooden one? The, the, old the nails. Stop oh. the nails. <laughs> He's going back now. <laughs> Leak sure had a pair of them when he yeah, got started. Yeah, I did. I did. It's blue diamond they were called. <laughs> Barlow gets the handball up. Palmer, Main, Subin. Golden opportunity here for the Dockers. McPhee the target. Put it to his advantage side. And they're the clearances they've had. They're not to get sure. You mm. mentioned they've dominated the clearances, but very rarely we've seen them get a couple of handballs and then run from a clearance, run from a stoppage like Subin did then. Generally, the Kangaroos have been super putting pressure on around the contest. Back into the team this week, Adam McPhee. Pull this margin back to 70 points. Four points are beyond them. They need to get some respectability back. From 45, and the crowd tells the story. Never a chance. Just want to go back to that Lindsay Thomas thing, Ruzi, about having a shot at goal. They've had 28 possessions between them, Campbell and Thomas, as small forwards. If they get a return like that and keep going, they're going to, in games, they're going to kick a lot of goals together. Look, you'd rather be getting the ball and missing rather than not no, getting the ball at no all. Doubt. So there's no question that both look really, really dangerous. They're really slick with their field kicking, ironically, when they get the ball. They generally use the ball yeah. pretty well around the field. It does come a tipping point, though, when you keep getting the ball and you keep missing. Well, we, I saw it with Lewis Jenner last year. You know, we had, I think it was 19 points in a row. So there's no doubt it's a confidence thing. Was Lewis Jenner just unlucky or would he have the yips? Well, I think you start off a bit unlucky. You miss a couple <laughs> and then you get the yips after that. Mullet from 50, the first gamer. Drifts a little wide. He's been impressive too. Yeah, he has been very good. Nice skills, good runner. Nice pace. Nice name, Mullet. You can't help but love the mullet, too, right. Dueno. Did yeah, you have the mullet or not? I would have rather he did. I would have rather I said that he was just a Melbourne boy. <laughs> How'd you say the Port Adelaide, ex Port Adelaide boy, did you have a mullet? You weren't allowed in South Australia as a kid if you didn't have a mullet. But uh, nobody could beat Stephen Kernahan and Greg Anderson. Oh, no. I think Ando still got here. Yes, yes. It still flows. Ballantyne flowing down the wing. A couple of bounces. Pumps it long. McPhee the target. Rises. One grab, not the second. Thompson's been oh, impeccable again. Goldstein. Bastanak. Clark takes them on. Has a run. Sandlin's the target. Has the reach. And takes the mark. Well, how, what about Zach Clark? Boy? We just saw the future right there, I think, of an All-Australian Ruckman. I, I've got no doubt he will be. And you look, he it's works hard. Cool. No, I'm telling you, Dwayne, anybody with the ability that he's got at ground level, it's not just in his tap, he's going to be a good forward. But gee, the way that worked, you'd love to see a lot more of this kicking along to this bloke. Sandlin's from 30. Silence tells the story. It's there. Well, both the Western Australian teams, sure. You've got Cox, the older fella, yeah, Sandlin's, yeah. and you've got Nat Nui. And Clark, Look at this. and he's just got that great athleticism, both he and Nat Nui. Probably not too smart about where to run and everything like that at the moment. More an instinctive ball players when the ball's around the stoppages, but they've both got enormous talent. And for different backgrounds as well. Mm. We talked about basketball earlier. Zach Clark is mm. the next basketballer. African-American parent, so we haven't seen a lot of African-American influence basketball into AFL, but geez, things are changing big time. Yep. The Mzungu of Zimbabwean descent, his father Zimbabwean playing the game now. The game is a changing and a changing for the better. Wells sidesteps around Mzungu to half forward. Goldstein, big goal, he runs inside 50 and sprays it wide. Another basketballer who had a chance to go and play in the States, but elected not to as Pedersen marks that on the line. He reminds me a little bit of Russell Robinson from Melbourne, the way that Pedersen goes about it. Gets on the lead, can mark in front. Floats it up. Edwards almost. He's really bouncy, isn't he? Yeah. He's, he's probably a bit taller than Robinson. Robinson is an unbelievable mark for his size, but Pedersen, he's, he's really nice and bouncy. He gets up. 
Another mature age recruit as well, Pedersen, 24 years of age. Slipped in and looks made for it. Long pump from Ibbotson. Mazungu tried, but Clark was front spot. Barlow. And now Fife can get and go. Main's running for him. McPhee's running for him. Hands it up. Oh. Palmer. Little fumble. Mullet gets back. High tackle. But almost works for North Norman to hold him up. Pokes it into Sandlin's direction. Arm drag. He got an arm drag there. And some of uh, the Dockers' handballs oh. tonight sure have been terrible. Oh. Fife, Fife was by himself. No pressure. Poor, poor handball to Palmer. Campbell, Swallow, out wide, Greenwood, Hanson. I think you said before, Rosie, too, this, this has been a great effort by North because Drew Petrie, yeah. you know, who's been the best forward all year by a oh, country mile, I would think, has, hasn't had a massive impact. Oh, oh, hard, not that. Goldstein went hard and he's into Silvani, who was concussed or knocked over earlier. He's just got another one. Barlow dragged down, good chase, Lindsay Thomas. Toad poke from Wells. Crowley, Goldstein tries to track him down. How would the umpire read that? Is it deliberate? No. Ball in. He's poor Silvani. He would have rather missed the plane, I reckon, coming over here this weekend because oh. it's just a courageous effort. What a great effort. And you've got to take your hat off to the kid. He was bad knock in the first quarter early on, looked all at sea. But that's great effort. Well done for the young fella just to go back after what's been a tough night for him. Looked a little high on Subin, up by City, ducked his head. Harvey, Silvani coming at each other. Harvey tries to keep his feet and steal it. Mazungu, likewise. And a little tap out, get a ball in. Liam Pickering downstairs. Yeah, Ryan Bastanx from North Melbourne's come up, he's having his left knee looked at at the moment, so now Matty Campbell's limped off as well, so there's a couple of sore boys down here. Yeah, Matty Campbell got a knock to his knee at training this week and had some strapping on it at training, and there was thought that he wouldn't play. Goldstein traps it, knocks it. Lindsay Thomas, he could have kicked a goal. He gave it up to Wells. 77 points, the biggest margin of the game. Uh, well done, Lindsay. Well done, Lindsay Thomas. Just... Yeah, he probably didn't want to have a shot himself, but he also just tackled prior to this good chase down to keep the ball inside 50 before that uh, contest there. And that was quick, game, and that's what you've got to do. Give the ball straight away. I think Fremantle could have a good look at that just to see what it's like to give the handball. Foot. We saw Fife uh, disregard his teammate in the square. Got to keep doing that till the end of the game. It's a great sight. There's Bastanac there on camera. Here's the Bastanac injury, by the way, guys. Just we go that. Jammed his. Okay. In the third quarter. It's a great sight, Daniel Wells at full oh. flight, isn't he? He just absolutely flew past Lindsay Thomas in, and he's just unstoppable when he gets the top pace. They moved him forward in this last quarter, too, which is a pretty good take him out of the midfield just to give him a spell and do his own thing. He's been very effective with two goals. Well, I think they, the, all the uh, small forwards have been terrific tonight. garlic has been good. Thomas has been oh. good defensively as well. Here he is on cue. Daniel Wells, he was held. He's already got two for the quarter. Sprays that. Barlow comes back. Silvani protected him. Dropped the mark. Here's your chance, Lindsay. Stroll in and goal. Hey. Well, that's one way to get you out of a putting slump, Shuri. <laughs> Get the half incher after knocking one dead on the par three yeah. and just tap it in for a nice little birdie there. But uh, Pickers is absolutely right. Those small forwards have been terrific. Gartland's come on and had, I think, 13 possessions and kicked two goals. And look, credit to Thomas. He just keeps working and working and he's got some reward out of it. Well done. Just saying about the marking effort here. Well done, Lindsay. I feel good for you because he, he defensively he does a lot of things right, and he'll have his he'll have his night. He has kicked. I don't know what's his biggest haul, Dwayne. You might know. In a season? Yeah, I oh, know. Just in a one uh, one offer. But uh, I tell you what, Barlow. Seven goals, five against Carlton. He kicked here one night. Well, we know he can do it then. Absolutely. Swallow. Court. Adams. Court. 
Mullet, who's been good in game one. Thompson has been good all night. In fact, they've all been great. Levi Greenwood. Oh, that was horrendous. <laughs> that, that, that's a reasonable call, Dwayne. That wasn't great. That, that was hard to do, actually. You nearly dislocated his hip kicking that one, sure. Yeah. Maz Mazungu gave him a couple of nouns and verbs to go on with. <laughs> you could just point at the scoreboard. High bomb. Sandlins is there. Had the reach. Couldn't bring it downhill. Arms free. Masungu. Oh, boy. That tells the tale of Fremantle's night off the side of the boot from Ballantyne. It's not a kicking clinic at the moment, is it? <laughs> 83 points. If you've joined us late, this is the biggest margin of the game, and it's threatening 100 points at the moment. Rawlings puts it up high. Sandlins oh. goes with a fist. It's as good as a kick. Mullet. A wobbler. And Silvani holds his ground. Jeez. That's a player and a team out of yeah. enormous confidence, aren't they? Just yeah, good point. Yeah. You should mark this, although. Harvey got in front of him. That wasn't. Who kicked that? Side steps. Five foremost grabbed him. Petrie, who's hardly seen it tonight. Harper. A floater towards goal. Goldstein's down there, and again, Silvani. I'll tell you, this, kid, this kid's resilient. You've got to give him credit because I think he was the one that kicked it out straight to Harvey. So, look, he'll learn from tonight. But well done. He just keeps working and working. Made some blues, but I love that about a kid. He just keeps going back to the well, back back to the pack before. Took a nice mark then. Barlow, Mazungu, Main, the target. Grimer, fist on it. Seeks the boundary. Ballantyne. Oh, he fell over and Grimer was almost hoping he'd take it out. We'll get a ball in. The crowd roaring. There's been a lot of talk this year about people not enjoying blowouts. Don't tell me the North Melbourne fans aren't enjoying this one. <laughs> Absolutely. I'll tell, tell you what, guys, it's uh, been an extra impressive performance given Drew Petrie hasn't hit the scoreboard at all. They've kicked 19 goals and they've had 11 different goal kickers. Yeah, they've had a great night pickers, really. They've, they've just been fantastic. Their teamwork, you'd see it again here, coming through the centre of the ground. Thomas. Spots Aaron Edwards. Too easy, isn't it? Takes the mark, yeah. 45 from goal. The, the other thing, every time the ball has gone deep to a one on one in the North Melbourne defence, they have stood up. They have been fantastic. Now, Grime on that occasion on Main, it was just one on one, did his job. Could well kick their biggest score of the year, North Melbourne. Lining up for their 20th goal. And Mr. Accurate misses one. I'll tell you what you do very rarely see, sure, with the forward press, though. You, you very rarely see the ball go coast to coast from deep like that. I mean, mm. you mentioned before, Freo haven't they put pressure at all. They haven't run back to help their defence, and they haven't put any forward pressure on. It's been a really disappointing display by Freo, but full credit to the Kangas. Kangas have been exceptional tonight. Subin. Wide ball. Gee, oh, Valentine's gone. gone. Hard to believe he's still out there. They're better off playing with 17 men. He's either cramped up or he's done a calf muscle or something. Garlic short. Oh, Adams. Looks like he's walking to the bench now. Yeah, so up on the hamstring. Mm. And they still have got a mathematical chance of making the finals. They need to beat Collingwood next week. Yeah, for to keep their hopes alive. They need Ballantyne next week. They've yeah, got to get him off, Dwayne. No question. Hanson wide. They are enjoying every minute of this North Melbourne swallow. 19 minutes gone, final term. And they are going to head into next week with their tails up North Melbourne, full of confidence against the Saints, who are going to be coming off a short week. St Kilda play tomorrow, They're coming off a short week and a travel. Greenwood, arm chop free. Sees the lead inside, 50 to Edwards. Second grab. Well, that was... I don't know, I've given the benefit of the doubt until I see the replay, but I'm not sure that was all that flash from... Was it McFarlane? Too easy again. Kangas one into the ground, just chipping it round, chipping it round. Here it is here, Greenwood. McPhee we didn't hold Greenwood up on the mark either. Here he comes in. Oh, that's terrible. Yeah, terrible. Well, that's got nothing... sprays it again. That's got nothing to do with ability. That's just... Let's have a look what happened here. I thought he might have been, you know, half cramping and then, oh, yeah. Just as he went to ground, you could see him grimace. Yeah. 
calf muscle cramping up. Oh, it's up. No, he's just feeling his hamstring. Well done. Well, well, there's no oh. ice. There's no doctor even talking to him at the moment. 50-minute penalty. I'll be cramping up in that, Liam. He just, just grabbed his hamstring as he was stretching in the pocket before he came off. But it was a cramp or a, a strain, I'm not sure. He has worked really hard tonight, Valentine. Yeah, he's, had a, he, he's one who's had a go, I reckon. Yeah. McPhee. Have Melbourne fans have stopped booing him? No, they haven't. That <laughs> <laughs> goes wide. He's another one, isn't he? Alienates uh, opposition supporters. They love to hate him. Well, he'll only have his own supporters if he keeps <laughs> kicking like that. <laughs> <laughs> Ticked into time on final term. Back into play. Petrie having a run in the ruck. Adams slips it out to Ferrito. Finds his way through some traffic. Goldstein, it sits, and McFarlane takes a McFarlane-like mark. He's taken plenty of those over his time. So it won't be a happy 200th game for Anthony Grover. He collects this and takes off from half-back. Just the fifth docker to 200 games, Anthony Grover. One of their better performers over time. Clark finds Subin. Hacks it up. No one could really get a jump at it. Thompson crossed it out of play. Yeah, well, both teams now be hoping to get out of it. With, you can see an ice pack there. Yeah. On, it looks like a lower hand from back of the knee or something along those lines. Pickers down there. Good. Five. Puts it in Palmer's direction. He's going to have to dive. He can't. He keeps his feet, which probably worked for him until Wells trapped it and gave it to Petrie. And now the run. Adams can get and go. It bounces unkindly for him. Five trying to track him down. Spears it inside 50. Splendid. Thomas. And this will test him. Go back. Yeah. yeah. He's in form. He kicked one in a row. Yes. <laughs> From the goal square. From the goal square. Joe the goose. Back yourself, son. Is that concern on his face or <laughs> <laughs> what's going through his mind here? Ah, uh, he's just gonna he just I reckon if they were five points down there'd be concern oh, on his yeah. face. Ian Baker Finch got the yips when after he won a British Open never played again. Or straight after. There he is. And he salutes the crowd. Brent Harvey gives him a hug. High fives all round. He's actually got a nice kicking action, so it's hard to believe that he can't kick it more often. Give us a smile, Scotty. Come on, he's just kicked the two in a row there. But again, out into space, too easy, coast to coast. Nice kick, and well done to Tom Thomas. His work rate's been really good all night. He's brought some teammates into the game. And here he goes. He says, oh, I can kick him. Don't worry about that. Liam Pickering. Yeah, he's here with Andrew Slow. Uh, Andrew, how's your gob? You've got a kick in the mouth. Yeah, just under the boundary there. Someone stepped on my face. So, a bit worried for the old looks, but uh, now they got through. So, uh, yeah, we're going all right, I think, out there. Yeah, yeah, we're going very well. You'd be really happy with how it's, uh, how it's gone. Your small forwards have been terrific. Yeah, really, I think, real even contrib contribution from everyone today. Um, Plenty of time. It's good to see him get on the board, and uh, yeah, Matty Campbell been terrific as well. Thanks, Matt. Well, Lindsay Thomas's peripheral vision <laughs> is as good as any player I've seen. Uh, yeah, he didn't did mean that. He did meant that, did he? I think so. <laughs> that wasn't a shot at goal. No, sure. no, it wasn't a shot at goal. I, I think it was a pass, but maybe not to this man who's been fantastic again. This is for his third. And he sprays it. Should have given it back to Lindsay. <laughs> So it's still a chance to be a 100-point victory. Still a chance to be here's the Lindsay Thomas kick. Oh, yeah, Dwayne. <laughs> There's no way no one meant to kick look away kicks. They work occasionally. Still a chance to be the biggest score for North Melbourne for the season, which is 21 goals, 16. They have 20 goals, 16 right now. I think the other thing, Ruzi, too, just North defensive pressure. You've got to give him a lot of credit because there has been no flow from the back half from Fremantle at all. Yeah, no doubt, particularly around the stoppages. They worked really, really hard, and they deserve this win. They've played all over them all day. And that's been the story for the Freo Dockers. Even when they've been out into space at times, they just haven't been able to move the ball. 
Their disposal by hand and foot has been terrible. Mullen goes back. Give Mundy some leeway there. I think it was a very tight yeah. kick. He's had 20, what's he had? 23 possession, not a bad return. Yeah, and his first game back for Mundy since round 12 after that leg injury. Grimer, in his first game back, has been good. Half forward. Ball slips through Harper's grass. Palmer. Speaking of back, Palmer also back into the Fremantle team. They've made a few changes for this week, but the chemistry hasn't quite been there. Main. Two well, and a half minutes and net again. Another turnover, Thompson. Gee, he's been good, hasn't he? It's a free for a push. I think it's McPhee's ball. Okay. Not a massive crowd, but they have been in full voice. 17,581 here at Eddie Hat Stadium. And it's a performance like this that'll keep the crowds coming to North Melbourne games. They have been fantastic to watch. Almost from the get-go. Mazungu. Takes them on on the boundary. Sits it up high. Hill under it. Waits for the bounce. Harvey. Rawlings. The old firm. Wells is running. And he's back in the 20s possession-wise. He's come off three possession games in the teens. The last three games he's played. But he's back playing good footy. And this is Silvani in the hands of trainers again, oh, by the way. Boy. Pedersen. He's had one of those does, hasn't he? Unfortunately. Petrie. Thought about it. It's almost time to throw the towel in for Silvani, isn't Edwards. it? Edwards. Yeah, take Sorry. him off. <laughs> He's had a ripping crack at it, but can someone just throw the white towel in, Dwayne? Yeah. Let's have a look what he's done here. Just oh. got oh, smacked and then, oh, oh. The, oh the head nah. back. He'd be questioning the Occupational Health and Safety <laughs> Act, I reckon, in the AFL level. Jeez. Oh, that's oh. a whiplash. That is. Days three times as he sneaks that in. And this is going to be their biggest score of the year for North Melbourne. 21 goals, 16, 142. They are 98 points in front of Fremantle. It could well be a 100-point-plus win. And you can't tell me North Melbourne fans haven't enjoyed watching this oh. blowout. I'll tell you it's been good, sure. I think you touched on it before. The back six of the Kangaroos have been really good. A lot of one-on-one -on -one contests have been peeling off to help each other out. They've got a really good athletic back six. Farido probably doesn't get a lot of credit, but he generally locks down on someone, does a really good job. Thompson's been good tonight. Grimer's been good tonight. You know, it's been a McMahon. You know, all of them have played really well, won their one-on-one -on -one contests, and made it very difficult for the three man with Dockers to score. Silvani's still out there. Mark Harvey might as well put him in for the bounce. I mean, if you're going to leave him out there. Pickers, can you come and go and grab him and get him off, please? Well, I'm going to try and just coax him over this way, where is he, I think. Can you interview him after the game for us? <laughs> see if he can actually... He won't remember it tomorrow. I was going to say, that'd be the first time we've interviewed a player from a team that's got beaten by 100 points. <laughs> and it might be more. Garlett short. Lindsay Thomas goes back. 40 seconds left. A lead by 98. He's loading up. He's gone long. Petrie... Can't get there. 99 points. He's high on confidence now, sure. He's trying to kick him for yeah. 80. <laughs> Seconds running down. Johnson down the middle. Barlow. Caught. Subin. Caught. Hinkley back. Harmer to Maine. I just reckon that stanza of play was the whole game there. Yeah. Three or four handballs for no distance, no penetration. And it's taken this, gee, it's, it worked the ball a lot. And Crowley will have a shot after the siren. But it'll be five losses in a row for Fremantle. And it'll be season alive for North Melbourne. One kick to come. Martin stands at 99 points now. Players on the line, and it's not through for a behind. Umpire just confirming whether it is a behind or not. It was a deliberate not through, so it's not going to count. If it's just off fingers, it does count, but if it's a deliberate not through, 
It doesn't. 99 points, the final margin. In fact, it is going to count. Bly says it was off hands and not punched through. 17,581. Most of them North Melbourne fans here tonight. And they had this one on their terms from the outset. It's their biggest score of the year. 21-17, 143. It's their ninth win of the season. They've got a good percentage. Two games to come for North Melbourne. They're going to St Kilda here next week. And then Richmond here, their final game of the home and away season. Let's head downstairs, Liam Pickering. Yeah, well, Todd Goldstein, uh, it's a fantastic win in a really important game. Yeah, yeah, we know every game now is a, like a final for us. And we can't afford to slip up, and it's good to see the boys fight out for the four quarters. Well, let's put you right in the mix again. You'll be probably watching that Sydney and uh, St Kilda game tomorrow, I'd imagine. Yeah, you know, I guess we can't worry about that too much. I think we've just got to worry about our own performance and, and keep winning games. If we do that, we'll give ourselves a chance. Yeah, what were you most impressed with your team tonight? We loved your forward pressure. Yeah, definitely. I think it was just, you know, a lot of times we let teams back in in the second half, and to be able to keep it, keep going and keep pushing hard is real credit to the boys. And your clearance work, they got the numbers early, but you had a lot of movement around your stoppages. Yeah, you know, we, we don't know where Stan Lance is going to put it. He's, he's unbelievable, but I think the boys did really well to read his hit-outs, and you know, hopefully I'll provide a bit of a contest for him. How do you go against a bloke that big? He's a monster of a man, and he's got a bit of help too. Zach, uh, the big fella, Zach, is also a, uh, a very, very good player. Yeah, it's just about trying to nullify their influence, and... I hope he doesn't hit it too far, because if we can keep it in close, it gives our boys a chance. And you enjoy getting forward to kick a couple of goals again tonight? Yeah, you know, it's just a thing you got to add to your game. And, you know, it was good to get a couple. Should have got one more, but, you know, it was, it was pleasing to get a couple of goals. It's also pleasing to see Lindsay kicking a couple of straight ones at the end. Yeah, you know, he's been kicking really well at training and did really well in the VFL, so I'm glad that he got a couple more himself. Well, well done, mate. It's a great win tonight. Cheers. Thanks a lot, fingers. Big Goldie, Todd Goldstein, and the North Melbourne fans can celebrate a win that keeps their season alive and they could still do some damage. No reason to say they won't be ultra competitive if not even start close to favourite next week against the Saints and then Richmond, final game of the home and away season. Well, they can and I'll tell you what, they, it all worked today. They were, they were tougher at the ball, as you said. The clearances, Fremantle just messed around with the ball too much, but that's the pressure of uh, North. You know, blokes like Pedersen, they've got a forward line. They did, Drew Petrie wasn't that great. Let's head downstairs again. Aaron Mullet, yeah, the, first the first gamer with Liam Pickering. Yeah, got the first game here, Dwayne. Uh, well done, mate. How did you enjoy that? Oh, it was experience and a half, mate. Um, just got the ball. The boys got around me, mate. It, I don't know, it felt real comfortable. So it was good, especially good to get a win first up too. But yeah, it was hard. Definitely hard. What about, uh, see you with Ballantyne there at the start. Uh, he's a cheeky little bugger. Yeah, he is. Yeah, he gets in there. I, I thought he might, but... I mean, I thought I might get a bit more being the first game, but also they weren't too bad, so... How did you go with the pace of the game? Because it was pretty hot early. Yeah, hot early. The first quarter, I blew up a bit. Um, obviously, being a lot different from VFL level, and, um, but I thought I'd adapt to it after the first quarter and got, got stuck in the game and ran it out pretty good. I was going to say, the 100-point uh, wins, they don't come around at all that often, mate. Well done. Yeah, no, it's good. It's good to get a good win anyway, first up, so... Uh, good on you, mate. Well done. Thanks, mate. Tough. First gamer, Aaron Mullet, who's about to be sprayed with Powerade down in the North Melbourne rooms. Half a win outside the eight with two games to come, North Melbourne, after a 98-point victory at Eddie Had Stadium. 21-17, 143 to 6-9, 45. Don't go away. Paul Roos to wrap it up straight after the break.